Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, it's Friday. Happy Friday. A lot to talk about in the past week. Uh, we had BlackRock file for the ETF. We had Michael Saylor buy some Bitcoin. We had the FOMC meeting and the minutes here. Speaking of that, monetary policy from the Fed. Uh, check this out. I got the real minutes right here. Recent indicators suggest the economic activity has continued to expand at a modest pace. Job gains have been robust in recent months and unemployment rate has remained low. Inflation remains elevated. The U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. Tighter credit conditions for households and businesses are likely to weigh on the economic activity. Uh, yada, yada, yada. The committee seeks to achieve a maximum employment and inflation rate of 2% over the longer run. So uh, the committee decided to maintain the target range federal funds rate at five and a quarter percent, holding the target range steady. And long story short, they're, they're in for two more rate hikes. Now I've got a tether dominance chart in the background here. I think it's very, very important. But um, once again, you've got guys like Jerome Powell, you know, lying out the side of their face. Anyways, uh, another piece of news here. Michael Saylor, BlackRock, Citadel, and Fidelity will help drive Bitcoin to $1 million. Guess who said that? Michael Saylor. And um, he, you know, there's also rumors that Michael Saylor is helping out the SEC uh, not the SEC. He's helping out BlackRock buy some Bitcoin. Um, and that is this article here, uh, this week in Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, you know, did post a bit of a rally and, um, you know, after inflation appeared to be cool, Bitcoin kind of hit its stride and you can actually see that very apparently in the dollar index. So inflation cools, dollar comes down, uh, Bitcoin rallies. I'll get into the dollar in a minute. Um, but it says dozens of companies applied for ETFs and were rejected. Um, to date, not a single Bitcoin spot ETF has been approved. And uh, the stakes are high because the spot ETF would offer investors the chance to buy Bitcoin and either ride the gravy train or go to hell in a handbasket. But if they later, um, but if the latter, they, they'll be safe in the knowledge that their investment is protected, unlike those who purchase and store directly. Anyways, long story short, um, we've got that going on. We've got all these companies coming behind BlackRock and saying, hey, we want a spot ETF also. It's going to put a lot of demand on a fixed supply. So let's get into Bitcoin price action, some of the underlying market dynamics. And you can see this bearish engulfing candle coming in from yesterday um, with some volume, uh, you know, kind of breaking the ascending triangle to the downside. And here's what I, I would say is uh, we're still stuck in the four hour range. But if you wanted to look at the first warning signs of trouble, yes, breaking this, you know, horizontal, not necessarily a good thing rejecting off the green 55 on the first pass. I'd say on the hourly time frame, though, um, if we do pop back above this pivot at 30,500, going to look good for probably a run back to the top side of the range. Um, so if you are on the shorter term time frames, but still you can see on the four hour, we are still, I'm going to get that, that uh, triangle out of the way. So in the four hour range, uh, 31.5 to the upside and uh, 29.5 to the downside, we're still caught in the range. Sandpaper range and volatility is snaking around, not really doing anything, still expanding. Uh, and you know, the posture, you would expect the bounce to come off this green 55 um, typically. Now we are getting a potential cross to the downside, which would be a point for the bears on the four hour time frame. So. Something to consider there as well. Six hour um, did have a uh, not not quite a lower lower yet, so we're still in the clear there. Um, daily, the daily time frame getting a bounce off the twenty one. You know, usually does get a bounce on the first pass, but again, low volatility read coming into that green fifty five at twenty eight six. Probably not a bad uh, you know opportunity zone. 
you know, somewhere between 28.5 and 27.5. Looking good there. That's probably the not 0.5 in the 618 or the, the 618 to be specific. After this massive daily, uh, you know, rally here, 26%, not bad. So we talked about that key uh, expansion here is going to get the next probably 20% move on the daily time frame. And you have momentum getting uh, kicked out of the critical zone. So that momentum is heavy to the downside as long as we're below 31.2. Pressure is on to the downside. So 31.2 is way, way up here. Uh, so a lot of work to flip the daily back around two day, uh, volatility beginning to decline, putting in a sell six signal with a bit of a bearish engulfing candle today. If we close like this point for the bears there on declining volatility. So, you know, uh, is the move waning volatility or sorry, volume is starting to curtail three day, uh, is going to cross down and that expansion did happen. And we did get the move off the three day volatility expansion. As soon as we got off 25%, um, you know, that move was, was getting ready to go. And, um, that's that five day is also looking bullish here. And you've got the silver cross on the five day. You've also got it on the weekly time frame, providing the impetus for, you know, some upside continuations. Um, what else do I want to bring up here? Um, tether dominance. That's what I had on my mind. So overall, uh, still waiting uh, for a break of the four hour range, which is probably going to bleed on into the higher term time frames. And we still have, you know, five day volatility expanding. So, you know, could chap around a bit more here. We said sideways week, July 4th. Um, however, However, um, you know, we are getting on, you know, I'd like to see a volatility reset on the four hour before we get that next explosive move. Unless it just wants to take off on the daily, who knows? Uh, the economic data coming out today, jobs reports coming out lower than expected. Hourly earnings are up 4%, 4.4%. Non-farm payrolls was lower than expected. So not bad there. Um, that is more bearish for the dollar and then bullish for the dollar manufacturing payrolls. That's inconsequential. You six unemployment rate that was bullish for the dollar. And how is the dollar reacting as Dixie is kind of just playing around in the range here. And, um, you know, if we start to lose this box one more time, coming back to the bottom side of the range, back above this box, probably going to give a test of this longer term trend line, uh, which I do imagine we are going to run into over the next 30 days, 30 more candles on the daily time frame. So we'll be watching this one with a keen eye, but uh, I think we have said that, yeah, pressure is to the downside, giving the bulls a bit more hopium here. NASDAQ just checking in here on our you know, uh, it's taken a while for this pullback to take place here, but you do have uh, not really any bearish divergence there. You're going to have it coming back all the way from the high. So if you do confirm this as a local high, right, this is going to, you know, ha play out some downside. Where would you want to test? First, fill the gap here at 14.6. And then next test down is going to be this pivot right here at 13.7. But in general, um, now that we, you know, are making some higher highs and higher lows on the daily time frame and the and the weekly time frame, um, you know, any kind of a higher low, you would expect to be another higher low and an opportunity at that. Um, volatility index VIX is playing around in this green box. Did make it down to the green box, bounced off it. So when volatility goes up, typically stocks go down. So is this one going to play out a bounce off of our little box here? Um, let's see if we got the bullish divergence going. Maybe a slight drive, maybe already played out. I'm not too interested in this one at the moment. I'll check in and underline market dynamics. So $9.3 billion open interest it is coming down in those 20% corrections when open interest gets around 10, you know, 10 uh, billion. That's leverage positions on the board. You can get the 15, 20% correction. Um, funding rates are positive. You're paying to go long. Those are inching their way up. So that's, you know, inconsequential at the moment. And the leverage ratio is coming down and 
you know, people are slightly, slightly in the greedy zone at a 55, but pretty neutral overall. You can see uh, we're, you know, caught in the middle of the range there at a 55. And what else did I want to bring up? Anything else? Um, Tether dominance brought it up in the very beginning of the call here. And this is going to be a big one, guys. Uh, Tether dominance, this massive ascending triangle. If it breaks to the upside, when Tether dominance goes up, that means people are putting their money in Tether. What are they doing when they're putting their money in Tether? They're usually selling their altcoins or selling their, their Bitcoins. <laughs> and essentially what you would expect here, um, if we do have hidden bullish divergence coming back from these pivots right here, that would be one, two, three drives. That should give us a shot at least mid range. But if this is the top side of the range and we do get, a, you know, what I would want to see essentially right now is uh, tether dominance comes back down. Maybe test the trend line one more time and then we pop uh, back up. If we can break this pivot, here's the important part, guys, is, um, you know, closing any kind of a daily back below that pivot is going to give us, you know, a, uh, a quick move down in tether dominance and a quick move up in altcoins. And then just checking in lastly on ETH Bitcoin, which uh, last, last I checked, it was a bit bearish. And yeah, we rejected on the 21. Same kind of idea here. If we can put in a higher low and a higher high, bit of a trend reversal and gives altcoins a chance to rally. And then just in general, I want to take a perusal uh, around some of the hotter altcoins. You can see on the daily time frame, Bitcoin has regained its uh, purple 200 exponential moving average on the daily time frame. Let's see on the four hour. Let's see on the daily. So Pepe doesn't even have one. It has barely been around. Uh, Compound has. Yep. And uh, looks like Compound is actually about to cool off here um, after putting in very you know momentous rally. So you get above the purple 200 bullish, but ten you tend to come back down to it at some point. Those are your next kind of um, you know could be potentially a major buying opportunity. Stacks, another uh, big one above the purple 200, so not bad. Silver cross to the upside. Um, you know, broke the major downtrend. And, uh, you know, the question is, are we going to come back and test this one at 41 cents? Um, I think that's a little less likely than not. And Ave just getting back above the purple 200. This one is one of my favorites, breaking the long term downtrend. Could we come back and test this trend line for a major buying opportunity? I would think that um, could be a potential and Bitcoin Cash, another one round to the moon here. And uh, yeah, in general, if you missed out on that party and you, you're looking for the next major buying opportunity on Bitcoin Cash, that purple 200 is gonna be working its way up. And like I said, eventually price action does come back to that purple 200 exponential moving average uh, any other hot altcoins you guys want me to check out, make sure you post a comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed some of the content today. And render uh, looks like a bit of a head and shoulders measure move down uh, is going to be way, way down. So we'll, we'll have to see if that neckline breaks here. Um, coming in, you know, probably right at this pivot. Or this one, if you're a little more conservative, um, that being said, back above here, uh, 231, and I'm going to get bullish on that one. Okay. Um, checking in on Matic. Um, do we have a two-day uptrend? Looks like we do. Daily uptrend, uh, looking good there. Um, overall uh you know that's 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 looking good if you're looking to get saved out of some of the lawsuit coins there um dydx another one uh below the purple 200 maybe a potential buying opportunity as this one is what i would think one of the stronger alt coins out there and then gmx still very very new token breaking the daily downtrend 
And, um, you know, could we come back and test the trend line? Yes. But as for now, higher highs, higher lows on the daily looking good there. And I'm going to wrap it up with that, guys. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday and uh, take care. Have a blessed day.